we've been talking about the time to evacuate, the time to prepare, pretty much over, uh, and that is the deal. Even if you have a boat that is still uh, docked at the Holover Marina or one of the other marinas here in South Florida, uh, so many people enjoy the boating life down here in Florida and are very nervous about what might happen to their watercrafts. Lisa Petrillo has been speaking with at least one boat owner down there, uh, and uh, there are a lot, there are a lot of boats behind you, Lisa. Boats that were left behind. Yeah, you know, Rick, you said it, a huge boating community, and what a beautiful scene behind me. I don't, we're all very nervous about what this is going to look like in about 48 hours. As a matter of fact, just moments ago, there was a father and his two sons who live not too far from here in the Bell Harbor area that just came to take photos because they want to do the before and after, which is kind of creepy. It's just scary to see what can happen. The other thing is, I heard Craig talking about the whistle. Um, it's a little eerie here. I don't think you can pick it up on my mic, but my cameraman and I were walking just looking for people, and there's whistling going all through here now. It's, bre it's breezy sometimes. It get, we get little wind bursts, um, and it's very desolate here, but we did just talk to a man, and uh, he didn't want to come on camera, who was telling us the key to these boats are these long lines, and he said he has not seen. Uh, Mohammed, let me show you them right here, this black line right here. So it's, and it goes all the way to that white boat over there. He, they say, I'm learning something here, folks, because I don't have a yacht. <laughs> Um, and that's the way you do it in a storm if you have no way of putting your boat up somewhere is the long lines and short lines combined. He said walking around this marina, he said he's been a boat uh, a yachtsman for over 40 years. Um, not enough of that. He says they're very tight and he's thinking that they can start to pile up when the winds uh, turn. So really that's happening here. Um, I did see another couple come over here and check their boats. The people that are not evacuating and this is obviously the beach area and evacuation zone are coming in sporadically to check their boats. We talked to a man earlier that said he's going to come back until he can't come back anymore to babysit his intrepid over there, his boat. So people are, you know, their, their, their boats are their toys, and that's what it's all about. They're going to keep checking. But it has been surprising to see how many people today. South Beach, we found yesterday more people were leaving. Here in this area from Bow Harbor to Hollandale Beach, we're finding so many people who are not evacuating. Back to you guys. Stand by for, for a minute, Lisa, because Craig Setzer is back. He's got some information uh, about those boats that are in the water there. Craig, what did you want to clarify? Yeah. So, guys, I just want to show, uh, Lisa, if you can just step a little bit to your right, because I want the uh, cameraman to get the dock there. And you can see the boats there. Uh, these boats are going to rise with the tide as it comes in. And so what, what the thinking is, is that you want to run your boat lines as long as possible so exactly. you don't kind of pin the boat down. But uh, if the whistling you're hearing, because there's all that rigging on the boats and things like that, so the wind goes through that, so you really hear the whistling near a marina. Some of the marinas in South Florida, after Andrew, they built floating docks that will go up and down with the tide just in anticipation of another hurricane. The, the problem is with these boats here, you know what? If, if we take a direct hit, you call the insurance company because all of these boats, there's nowhere to move them. You can, you can pay a lot of money to haul them out. A lot of people have uh, contracts where they have a haul out company and they'll take their boat to a yard, they will take it out of the water and put it on stilts. The thing about boats and hurricanes is, is that it's better to have it out of the water than in the water. And those are big boats, obviously, uh, because a boat that sinks at the dock is unrecoverable. A boat that is blown over on, on land uh, does better. And those are such it's beautiful boats. It would be so sad if anything happened to them, Lisa. It's very true, and that's exactly what that gentleman was telling me about these long lines is what Craig said is that they, they ride, they're hoping that they ride out this storm and they will move with it and then come back with it. He was, though, I t will tell you, very critical of many of the boats that we can't get to in there because it's locked um, that were super tight. So anyway, we're just going to wait to see what happens and that it won't be an Andrew and we'll find them in the street over there. Back All to right, you. All right, Lisa, thank you very much. And